ready for a digital dive? You're listening to the GZ Chop Shop Podcast, the weekly tech and gaming media podcast that breaks down the latest news, lore, and more. So plug in, because the GZ Chop Shop starts now. Yo, what is up, everybody? It's your host, Project Itachi. Joined with my good friend and co-host, War Nurse. Welcome back to another week of the GZ Chop Shop Podcast, your go-to podcast for everything gaming and tech conversation, news related. And this is definitely going to be a conversation piece because this is something that has been irking me for a long, long time. Long, long time. But before we get into that, I got to get this promo mo- Promo Momo, Promo Momo. <laughs> Out of the way. Go visit the gzshop.com. Go grab yourself this wonderful only gaming t-shirt. Very comfortable, very good material. And we are definitely going to be talking about gaming today. So I want everyone who listens to this in the future, go rock this shirt while you're listening to this podcast and then really feel the energy. gzshop.com. Use code GZCrew. Save 10% off. Now... We are going to talk about the gaming community and just <laughs> how I saw you looking at me when I was cracking my neck. Toxic. <laughs> just how toxic the gaming community is. And where is this coming from? They say, Atachi, what, what, what are you talking about? The gaming community is, is fine and wholesome. No, 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 no. The gaming community right now. See, first, the anime community on my list of most toxic, and I'm a member of both, so I get to say this, was the most toxic community originally. Because you could not just easily walk into... The anime community is a cult. One does not just simply enter and get friendly welcoming. You you gotta be in it for a while, know what you're talking about, and then you can interact with other people. Well, and then God forbid you like one anime more than another. Exactly. Then you start or, a war. Or you like sleeper animes more than you do what's Mainstream. popular. Yeah. Um, but right now, because of COVID, the gaming community has expanded. It's grown. And it is literally the number one most consumed media above television and movies. Everyone knows this now. And it has also moved it up the list from second place most toxic to number one most toxic. And I'm about to explain why. So last month, the game Forsaken dropped. And this is something I've been watching. And I'm just talking like in terms of like content creators and reviewers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the game Forsaken dropped and it was developed by Square Enix. And I am a huge fan of Square Enix games, period. That is a very important part. I want everyone to put that in the back of your memory. I'm a fan of Square Enix games, period. Forsaken came out and it was introducing something different. It was mixing parkour mechanics with magic in an open world concept. I thought it was phenomenal. Now, they are experimenting with a new formula. It is not going to be perfect. I wasn't expecting it to be perfect. Most people didn't know what they were getting, but I knew from the beginning, and you guys can probably attest to this. I said, this is going to get review bombed and not because of the game, but they're going to say it's because of the game. And I watched other people play it and I reached out to a few creators on Instagram and I asked them, I said, hey, what is your take uh, on for for spoken and everyone I asked said they enjoyed the game and they did not understand why it was getting review bombed. And I said, honestly, I think it was getting review bombed mainly because of it's one of the rare few i can't think of another one off the top of my head so if anyone knows please let me know in 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 comments or anything it is a black female lead in the game it's been promoted as such there's been no secret about it and as soon as i saw that i said this game is going to get panned but they're not going to say that's the reason because you know 
we're in a very strong cancel culture, socially, you know, socially correct. And you're all annoying for it. <laughs> so they can't single one say of you. Uh, on either side of the spectrum are annoying. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. But they can't say that's the reason um, it's getting pan. They can't say that. So what is happening is they're basically coming up with other reasons to pan the game. And one of the common ones is, oh, well, you know, the writing is bad. Um, the dialogue is cheesy. Okay, but what about the actual game? Yeah, but the writing, okay, but what about the actual game? You know, because it's the player playing the game. What about the controls? What about the combat? What about the enemies? What about the bosses? What about the interactions? You, you know what kills me about that too is the same, because the anime and gaming community are fairly blended. A large amount of people that do one typically do the other. So you got people complaining about the writing not appreciating the you know like the, the animation and the gameplay itself but complaining about the writing and the cheesiness but then those same people will go to anime and watch watch garbage shit or complain that animation's not up to par even if the writing is amazing or they won't watch older anime because they don't like the animation, even though the writing is amazing. That's how you know it's all bullshit. Like they're just all speaking out of their ass. Mm -hmm. None of them are thinking for themselves. None of them are actually, it's group thought. That's what it is. It's mm -hmm. group thought. You get a group of people and they start bitching about something and then they go, Oh yeah, I agree. Cause I want to agree with you and I want to be included. And then they just, a bunch of bullshit comes out of their mouth and then they shit all over these games. And then the game ends up getting canned, even though it's a perfectly fine game. Yeah. I say it's a brand new concept. There's no reason for the game to be getting so much heat that it's been receiving. And, you know, another thing that that bothers me about this was the fact that people always say, oh, well, when Square Enix puts out anything other than Final Fantasy, it's a miss. How do you know? Did you play it or did you base it off a person that you read their reviews and you feel like, oh, well, you know, they're, they're, they're just top tier reviewer. They, they, their word must be law because I know one of the games that was mentioned, they were like, oh, it's a miss is like Harvestella. I like Harvestella. It's a dungeon crawling, farming sim, dating sim action game. Like it's a bunch of genres put together and I like it because it's a break from the, the, the cog wheel of crap we constantly get. Battle Royals, FPS, open world game. They, you know, all that stuff is constantly churned out. You could set your clock by it. So Square Enix puts out games that I like. I feel like there's these sleeper hits, but people are just like, oh, is it Final Fantasy? No, I don't care. It's going to suck. And they don't even play it. And proof of, and this is why I'm so ticked of my fellow gaming immunity, proof of people who don't have even the, the, the smallest of right to comment on something. Did you see what the latest thing gamers are complaining about right now? I did put it in the Discord chat. Uh, what was it? The 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 Hogwarts? The well, well you put that it was the Hogwarts. Hogwarts like I said, they're complaining about the rain effect in Resident Evil Four Remake. The rain. These people obviously are not gamers. I'm gonna I'm gonna call it right now. Real gamers are our age. Our generation of real gamers. We grew up with Nintendo's PlayStation ones, fucking graphics that to today's standards are total garbage, but we didn't care. We didn't really know any better either. Mm -hmm. We played because we loved the stories. Gamers now don't care about stories. Mm -mm. And I know they don't care about stories because they look at games like Elden Ring and go, there's no story because they're too fucking lazy to play the game and go get the information themselves. They want it to be handed to they them. It handed to them. The new generation of gamers are not gamers playing call of duty and Fortnite, and then complaining about every single game that comes out. That's open world because of the rain or you don't like the writing, but that's not like get the fuck out of here. Like you're, you're not gamers. None of y'all are really gamers. No, you're I 100% agree because your, 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 your opinions mean nothing. 
I was reading through, and there was this one You've comment. You've had it easy since you were born. <laughs> you were born with VR. Born in and VR. And you were like, this is it. Like, shut up. There was one comment that stuck out to me on the Twitter thread I was reading, and the, the person was like, uh, this, you know, well, I never liked Resident Evil 4. It was the reason I stopped playing Resident Evil since. So you're saying you stopped playing Resident Evil 4 before a remake was even thought of. Then why the hell are you commenting on this if you don't even <laughs> like it? That goes back to wanting attention. The only reason people make comments online on anything is for attention. They want to be validated. They don't want to, they don't want to put out any like sensible, logical information that's even remotely useful. Mm -hmm. They just want to be validated and that's it. They don't give a shit. Yeah. yeah. And this goes back to things I've said in the last podcast and the last podcast. And I'll repeat myself a million times. I don't care who likes or not. You're all fucking brainwashed. You don't think for yourselves. Yeah. Because they're just following the the herd mentality. Because when I look and they're like, people are triggered over the RE4 remake reign. And I said, you know what? People are just complaining for the sake of complaining. Because to prove this point, there was a game. I can't remember what it is. Burn, Burn will remember. And we were talking about it. He said that this, uh, it was, it's a well-known developer. I think it was Bethesda. He would know. Um, but a well-known developer just dropped a game on Xbox quietly no trailers no lead up but it is the director of the original resident evil 4 and the evil within which were highly oh, praised good games. game highly Great praised game. games evil within man jesus and it's a rhythm based game with action elements if i'm if i'm remembering correctly but there was no announcement lead up to whatever. They just dropped it quietly. And guess what? People fucking loved it. And you know what this tells me? You didn't give them anything to complain about. You didn't give them any com complaint about. So they, there was no standard that they had put in their head to pan a game. You can't pan something you don't know about. Which again goes back to people can't think for themselves. They can't control their own thoughts and emotions and how they respond to things. They just say shit. They just say shit. And I'm they don't thinking, know what they're saying. They're just bitching. And the other thing someone brought up in that, that Twitter thread about the Resident Evil reign. And I'm like, yes, people don't understand this. And, I, and I'm saying this as a consumer. We as gamers have no right to complain about any sense of graphics in a game because we do not understand the intricacies that go in to detailing worlds. And I'm learning. And the reason I'm saying this is because I'm learning that I am literally in the midst of learning how to develop a game on RPG maker, one of the easiest gaming development softwares to start with. And that shit is hard. And I would be ticked if I decided to add rain and said some Joe Schmo with just their high school diploma comes around and goes, oh man, these rain effects are terrible. Man, if you don't, <laughs> yeah, you don't, you don't get to have a shit job with a shit life coming from shit with a shitty degree that has nothing to do with fucking AI or gaming or, or any kind of computer software and then complain that the rain doesn't look good enough. It, it, it hails back to the whole Spider-Man thing. People complain because the pool wasn't as reflective as they showed in the trailer. <laughs> but then because found out it, it was a phenomenal on, game it, it depends on the upload and and the settings of the game when they uploaded it and the tv they decided to put it on in best buy to make you look at it and go that's the greatest tv i've ever seen and then you purchase it and then go home and you don't understand the settings so the tv doesn't look as good as you thought it was going to look because you didn't fucking know what you were buying because you can't think for yourself and people don't understand video compression Quality of things change in video compression, depending on how that person recorded the video, exported the video. If they didn't export it into a proper web format, a, a H, H.2 F whatever, or they made it an MP4, however they compress that video and software they use will change the quality that I'm you are seeing. Mad. I'm just getting upset now. <laughs> so I'm like, everyone is getting all worked up just for the sake of getting worked up. And I think it's the people that are probably upset that their favorite game isn't getting remade or, you know, in the case of Square Enix, it's not another want, Final Fantasy. I want Sword Art Online so bad and I want to meet all these people in this game. <laughs> <laughs> 
I want to meet every single one of them in this game. Sword art online. I want it to be very real. I want it to, to, to be exactly like sword art online. And I'm going to use every, every ounce of knowledge I've gained since, since I first started watching anime and gaming since I was a little kid, almost 30 years of, I, I want to bring it in and I want to just, just be OP as shit and be ruthless. <laughs> But those people won't be in the game because no, they, they don't won't. actually. Just, they're a bunch of fucking cowards that can't think for themselves that just go on Reddit when they're upset. Man, rain, like shut up. So oh, and, God, and, like, I'm bitter. I'm so bitter. And with the Hogwarts thing, like you know, trying to boy like, <sighs> what are they boycotting it for? Because of a comment uh, J.K. Rowling made. She's not even part of the game. <laughs> But because it's based off of the world she created, they want to boycott it. You know what? I wonder how many people are out there right now still listening to Michael Jackson or R. Kelly. Absolutely. If you don't think that man's getting paid in prison. Here's the thing. thing. There's there's so much art out there. And and when I say art, you know, you know, photography, pictures, cinema, fucking music. Whatever the case is, art. There's so much art out there in this world. And regardless of it, like, like regardless of how many people you look at, there's always going to be a handful of people that suck. It does not matter what field they're from. Human beings suck. I am not about to boycott anything because the artist is a piece of shit. He came out or she came out with something that was amazing. And I, I appreciate, I'm like, wow, this is beautiful. Turns out that guy or girl was a total fucking asshole and they sucked or whatever, they, whatever they did. Well, that's great. Okay. Fuck. They suck. But what do you want me to hate the art? Like I can still appreciate art and <laughs> separate the fact that that other person that made this art really sucked. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's possible. I've, I've read books before and I found out the author was a horrible human being. I did. I wasn't like this book's a piece. I, I'll never read this again. Like I'm, it, it was still a beautiful book. It still taught me some, I still learned something from it. Yeah. And yeah. that's the thing. We're so arrogant as people that as individuals, we want to just truly believe that we're better than everybody else in every single way that, and, and we go on these strikes and we're like, we're justice and, and, and we know and like, not really every single one of us suck. Mm-hmm. The difference is, are you able to admit, acknowledge that you suck? Look at other people and go, okay, we're all people. Some of those people suck a little bit more, <laughs> but I suck too. Yeah. And maybe appreciate the world for what it is and what it has to offer instead of, I don't know trying to tell everybody else in the world how they should think because then at the end of the day, you're no different than the, the people you're complaining about who are writing the stories or making the art or, you know, on, on media telling you how to think. So we should all just kind of take a step back, think for ourselves and just appreciate the things the world gives us. I entirely uh, agree with you. And that, and that's the, my biggest thing is just like, think, think and, and, and judge for yourselves. Reviews are nice. They're a good starting point. Like I read maybe one or two to just get a gist, but then I'm, there's certain things I'm looking for. I have a criteria. How's the game? Because that's what it is. It's a, it's a game. How does the game handle? How does it play? Because let's be honest, another thing that ticks me off about a lot of these people that are complaining, especially when they coming back to first book and they were talking about the right. I'm like, how many of you actually listen to the story? Because there was a comment and I totally agree with this. And this this person basically called out and said, hey, let's be honest here. It's a ton of YouTube content creators. You know, these they you got these people that write these bias reviews because it's just not their cup of tea. Then you got all these YouTube content creators that are just rushing for review codes to be the first person to beat it. And 
and, and he went down the, the, you know, they went down the line of all these different things. And I was like, yo, that's exactly how I feel. I'm like, when you look at it, it's all about who can beat it first. And why is it the next, is it the next big thing? I said, the, we complain about the developers. Are they off the hook? Absolutely not. But if we're the way we are, we're basically telling them no matter what you do, we're going to shit on it anyway. So as a learning developer, I could see where I would just be like, well, why bother? I think that's why we're in the remake phase. That's why we're in the remake phase, because right now, no developer wants to experiment. That's why games get pushed back, get delayed, because I think the strategy we're going to see is they tell us they're all regretting telling us about these games now. And as it gets closer, they can see the keyboard warriors salivating, salivating day one videos are up full 100% completion, review codes, and then people are panning your game before it even gets out there. And all you need is this, and, and, and it's the same thing that happened with Forspoken. Square Enix did not want to give out review codes. And you got these privileged reviewers going, oh, well, us not having an access code, that's unheard of. So take with that and do what you will. Like, if they don't want to give you a review code, they don't got to give you a review code. It's their freaking game. You, who were you? Were you on the development team? Were you on QA? Did you write the story? No, you're literally a person who gets to sit there, play it, and give an opinion. An opinion. That you're, that you're paid for. But they're, it's their choice if they want to give you a review code. Because guess what? 99% of gamers aren't getting review code. They get the game when it comes out and they find out for themselves. There have been games that were praised that I played and I was like, yo, this game is a piece of garbage. Why is this so phenomenal? Why it what? One of those games. There's Fortnite. Two things. <laughs> I, I, I there's two things I would do if I was if 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 I had the ability. I don't know if it would take like Tony Stark level of richness or some kind of superpower. I'm not sure what it would take. But if I could, Dragon Balls. If I had fucking Dragon Balls <laughs> and I had a couple wishes, I'd wish for two things. I would delete Walmart from the face of the planet. <laughs> Bye. I would delete it like it never existed. It would go away forever. Two. I would delete the internet. I would make the internet go bye-bye. I used to think I'd stop at social media. I'd make social media go away. But the internet is more powerful and interconnected than ever before. Now, I would shut the internet down. Goodbye. I love technology. I love what it can do for people. But unfortunately, it brought us together in ways that, that far outweigh any pros that it could possibly try to like boast. I, I never truly understood how disgusting human beings were like in their soul until I have been able to get older and watch the internet grow into what it is now. And it's, it's just disgusting. I would delete Walmart and the internet from existence. Goodbye. Guys, you better hope War Nurse doesn't find the Dragon Balls. I will fuck, don't <laughs> think I won't. If, if I know one thing, I'm a man of resolve. This man's about to John Wick the internet out of existence. I'll John Wick the shit out of the internet. And someone's like, well, what did you do with podcast? Fuck that too. Fuck all you. I'll take the hit. <laughs> Buy internet. You think I care? I'm happy with a book. I'm good. Yeah. I mean, for us, it was just like, hey, there were video games without internet. It was fine. Yeah. Go back was, to visiting your friend's in house. In some ways, it was more enjoyable. Yeah. Bring back arcades. Go back to seeing your friends. At Bring least, that N64 least, out. Yeah. At, at least when you played like like PvP games with your buddies, whether it was on one console or you had a landline at a GameStop or a house or something, and you had a bunch connected, at least when you wanted to say, fuck you, you had to do it to my face. 
you know, at, at least when I wanted to talk shit, I had to be like, hey, hey, Michael, you're a real <laughs> fat piece of shit, and I hate your mom. Your mom <laughs> sucks, even though mom has nothing to do with this. Yeah, you but know, she was him. in there making snacks for you guys. I was going to be toxic. I had to do it to his face. And when I got a Coke can thrown at the side of my head, <laughs> it was well earned and understood. There were consequences to actions. That's all I'm saying. I just, I just, again, like in an episode we did a couple weeks ago, I just implored people to do critical thinking, read good reviews, read bad reviews. If you thrive off of them, I suggest doing both good, bad, multiple slight sites, pull them together and then make your own, you know, your own judgment call, you know, because where there's bad, there's good. And if the bad just doesn't make any sense, then that's when you got to be like, okay, there's more here. There's a little, there's a little bias here. And like I said, with first spoken, I was seeing that because everyone I asked was like, I like the game. I think it's good. And I'm like, see, that's, that's what I'm, 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 that's what I was feeling. And I just felt like they didn't like where the direction was going. And, and this is my, my final thought on this before we, uh, we wrap up the episode is to, to further prove that point. Um, something else we were talking about was like, uh, how some of these games were promoted. I said, if for spoken had done misdirection, misdirection and promoted it differently, that game would have been praised before launch. I said, because look at Skyrim. Skyrim has survived years. Two console generations. Because people love it. But why do they love it? You could create your own character. But how was it promoted? It was promoted with a guy that damn near looked like a Viking. Your typical Caucasian male lead. That was the face of Skyrim. That's what people correlated Skyrim to. That's how they saw it. And that's what stuck. Look at most of our major video games and the face that's promoted, especially with created character. Midnight Suns had a little bit of a rocky, eh, but then people started playing it and they liked it. But that was because it was promoted showing that canonically, the lead is female and they had designed her a little bit more dark skin and it was getting mixed reviews. And a lot of people were like, Oh, it's a little bit, uh, they were trying to find a reason we not say to a like lot the of game. people, but we know who it was. Yeah. But, but they were trying to find a reason not to like the game, but then you find out it's actually well-written, super detailed hours of content and replayability. And now people like the game, but I think how they promoted it, being honest to themselves hurt the sales because it went on sale like not even a month after it came out. A Marvel game on sale, not even a month later. And I'm like, it's due to those crappy reviews they were getting. Those mixed See, reviews. Right here, this this is why I I enjoy my niche games. Mech Warrior 5. You know, I'm really into my Mech Warrior 5 mercenaries, and it was the first of its kind of that title to come out in uh, just over 20 years. The game's never, I think it's been on sale once, but it was like a, a year or so after it came out and it dropped by like $10. I bought every DLC. Every DLC was 15 bucks. There's four DLCs now over the past since 2019. So like three and a half, four years. Um, I have no complaints. No one's bitching about it. No, because it's a niche group. It's, it's, a niche, it's group. niche and it's just popular enough to get DLCs, mm -hmm. but nobody's fucking with it. Mm -hmm. I like it for what it is, and I play it, and I love games like that. It's a it's a very sad state we're in as 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 gamers. Like I said, we're the most toxic. We're our own worst enemy because we complain about things that don't need to be complained about. We'll complain about a finished product, but we accept an unfinished product and praise it. Cause you can buy skins and uh, a pass and uh, unlock stuff without earning it. Uh, yeah. I hate like, all of you. And the thing is, they're like, Oh, it's poor writing. And I'm like, we you literally are buying script. 
No, seriously. Like, sure, I've played games that the writing, like, I could admit sucked, but I, I can't write a script. You don't see me writing. Therefore, can I really complain about the writing? Like, you can be like, oh, well, you know, that's their job. Like, okay. And your job's to complain? Like, like, just, if you don't like it, shut up and don't play it anymore. Go get your money back. But you, you, like, what do you, who are you trying to save by getting online and bitching about everything that you could possibly come up with? If I wanted to, there's not a single thing that goes that I, I experiment or, or experience or touch or see in my life every single day that I couldn't possibly complain about. I could, if I wanted to, mm-hmm. if I wanted to, and that's the thing, people want to be negative. They want to complain and then they want to be validated. And I think this was a way because first spoken was was highly anticipated and because it didn't get like, you know, um, canceled. I think this was also a way to prevent it to, from being up for any kind of awards. Pan the game, make it hate it, kill the sales and it can't go up for awards. And then it cripples other people from wanting to make that same attempt down the line. Because then people become dissuaded from doing it. It's the same thing as people that want to start a small business. It's the fear of what they saw happen to others that prevents them from doing it. And people are looking at Forspoken and they're taking these critical reviews as like, oh, these guys know what they're talking about. It must be a, a crap game. And they will never try it themselves. And then other developers who may have wanted to follow in that footsteps won't. Which makes me appreciate FromSoft so much more because people will complain about the game and then FromSoft will make an update and make the game harder. (laughs) Yeah, get get the get the fair weather players out of there. And then (laughs) and then they'll drop a new game every few years and they're like, yep, this game, uh, as you expect, it's going to be unnecessarily difficult and we don't care. And uh, if you complain about it, we'll do an update since that's a thing now and we'll make life worse. Yeah. And I love that because then you just you just weed those people out because they can't beat it. They'll complain about it. But guess what? They won't come back. They're gone. And that's all from because FromSoft wants people that will immerse themselves and enjoy the world they've created for us. Which is why the story is not linear. It's in there. You just have to find it and put it together. Yeah. If that's not for you, that's okay. But shut up. Go go play a game that's linear with a storyline. Yeah. Yeah. But But, anyways. But we would love to hear your guys' thoughts on it. Uh, Whether you agree, disagree, what's your point of view? Um, Do you take take reviews as, as the spoken word or do you make your own personal review and criteria for games that you play uh we would definitely love to hear your thoughts go to our website osntacmedia.com go to the show page click the gz chop shop podcast and at the very top of the page you can submit your thoughts that we will uh take in and probably play on a future episode so we would love to love to and i would guys. personally love complaints and review bombs so that i can read them on the show and make fun of you <laughs> I would love that. So please give me material. I love material. We love material. So yeah. So yeah, definitely let us know. Anyway, that's it for this week. You guys have been amazing. Stay safe out there. Take care of yourself and each other. And we'll catch all of you wonderful people on the next podcast. Later.